Hey, good morning to everybody. Now, take a look at what we have here. This is the integrated 12 volt battery that belongs to the Honda Ioniq after 2017, which is the second generation, uh, Kia Niro as well. But as you can see, this 12 volt battery is fully swollen. Hi, welcome to this new episode of Hybrid Solution Diagnostic. Now this episode is gonna be actually a short video, but I'm kind of curious and I want to share this information with you. This 12 volt battery is one of the, the, the ones that comes with the Hyundai Ionic. Finally, over some years, it begins to swell. And I want to know why, not only that, I want to take a part, complete this battery and share with you if it's probably fixable, if it's serviceable, uh, inspect all its components within. So what do you see? We find out together about the 12 volt battery integrated in the Ionic. So if you want to learn, stick around and we will continue that. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is let's take a quick look of the battery itself as a complete unit, which you guys remember that we replaced this a uh, couple of episodes ago and I was saving it uh, for school purposes. I'm actually taking it to school uh, for my students, but I also wanted to share with you about the integrity of this battery, all of its components. So let's take a quick look first before we take apart. What do we have here? What is it that this battery is about? So positive and negative lead which is of course she always has a voltage. Now the thing we need to remember is that this is a lithium ion battery. I think it's a lithium polymer. But the thing is, for some reason, as you guys can clearly see, this battery is super swollen. Look, swollen as it gets. Now, what else we have here? We have some controllers over here. Let me see, yes. This cable, which has a one, two, three, four, five pins, okay, that connects directly with the battery inside. The other thing is that you need to be aware that lithium batteries, if you're gonna do a circuit with lithium batteries connected in series as well as parallel, uh, you have to remember that you have to use a battery management system to keep this battery with a cell balancing system. If you don't do that with lithium ion batteries, the battery is going to get unbalanced and could fail and even catch a fire. That's why the lithium batteries, they always need to be kept 100% in balance. Now, for some reason, over time, the charging system begins to, I don't know, lose its calibration because of the 12 volt battery begins to, some of the cells begin to lose capacity. So something that I want to share with you as well is that hmm, the very same principles with the electric vehicles is that you might need to recalibrate the state of charge of these batteries with your scan tools every certain often to let the computer know that the battery probably might be losing a little capacity, okay? Which mm, definitely is one of the greatest things to do if you wanna keep this battery over time, okay? Because as I said, the level of cycling of this total battery, it's, it shouldn't be that much like for this kind of battery to begin to swell four or five years after being used because they're supposed to last way much more. So anyway, too much talking. Let's take apart this battery and let's see all this component inside. So we will continue. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out these connections over here and now I'm going to open the cable completely. Now, give me a second. All right, now that I open all the connections over here, let me see if I have a chance, yeah. Take this cover out, give me a second, here we go. All right, now we can clearly see over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cells that we have inside the battery. Now those are big cells completely. Mm, all right, let me open up this side now. Give me a second, we'll, we'll continue. Okay, now in the back of the battery, just by plying, give me a second, yes, just plying this a little bit out, we can take out this cover, and finally we have, let's see, one, two cables coming over here, and I can clearly see the cells. Now, let me take out this cover, give me a second. Yes, as you can see, we're very careful taking out this cover, and we see clearly 
These are voltage monitoring cables. All right. Now, let me continue taking it apart. The other thing is, I need to take away this clips over here. One, two. The... Mm, let me see. This is the heat exchanger over here. All right. And finally, begin to open one, two, three, four complete bolts that probably uh, grab in the complete battery as a whole structure. Now, let me take them out. Give me a second. Once I took out these two bolts from here, I get able to probably, let me see, to remove the heat exchangers. Let me see. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. I got it. It has like some sort of like a metal plate. Okay. Touching this heat sink, which, mmm. All right. Got it. Huh. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't consider this the very best or efficient. Now, you have to remember that we are located here in the Caribbean, which is pretty hot. So, anyway, you won't believe it, but this is the cooling system of this battery. Mm. Anyway, let me keep opening. We will continue then. Okay, so once I remove these two clips, one over here and the one here in the top, you will see that the battery begins to swell even way much more. Oh, boy. I was not expecting this. And the other thing is that, of course, the voltage monitoring is over here, five two cables and looks like we have let me see three more cables right here so let me take let me let me open this one let me take it up give me a second you guys won't believe it but i was just taking out all the four bolts from here and from the up of the structure from the top part of the structure she doesn't have any clip anything but just the bolt but underneath it has this metal uh like it's like a rough clip over here holding it Okay, the mounting, but look what happened to the battery. You know what this means, right? Look how swollen are all the cells within. This is not good, actually. A lithium cell that swells at this level inside your vehicle, it's definitely not safe. That's why uh, here at Hyper Solution Diagnostic, I'm actually very, very stubborn that when you have any lithium battery that begins to swell, replace it right away. You have to remember that lithium ion, when they uh, they begin to swell a big internal resistance, they might create a short circuit and become in thermal runaway. Now, lithium batteries, when they come in thermal, ra uh, thermal runaway, okay, they could create fire. So you gotta be very careful. So here's what I'm gonna do. I have to take these out very carefully, very, very carefully, because this is the only thing that holding the cells in its place. So I can just finally open the battery as a complete structure. So let me take them out very, let me see. There it is, okay, she's out. Now let's go to the other side, here we go. Carefully, carefully, all right, finally. All right, let's see, oh yeah. Okay, some sort of like a plastic little layer over here hey i'm discovering this together with you guys you know okay all right the aluminum cover this is the same aluminum cover of the cells of the high voltage system cell cover all right yeah it's well isolated for sure all right now let me take out all these cables let me take out the voltage sensor because I, I can see the voltage sensors uh, they don't have any connection for you to take them out unless you unpin them. So I'm just going to take them out. So give me a second. We're almost done here. All right. I discovered already the voltage monitoring. So here what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is just going to cut this cable because I'm trying to unplug them, but I can't. And as you can see, they're welded. So if we have one, two, three, four, let me see. How many pairs? Oh boy, I, I still haven't get yet, but I think we have 10 cells over here. Hmm, let me make the count. Give me a second. All right, so I completely remove the cell voltage monitoring system. And finally, as you can see, I can open now the battery cells. And as you can see, we have two, four, six, two, four, six over here. And finally, two more, eight. So we have eight cells connected in series. Let me see. I think it's series. Ah, no, 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 no. It's eight cells connected in series, parallel. So pair of two connected in parallel and, pa and two pairs 
connect them in series. That's how it works. So we finally will get, usually it's about 13.5, 13.5 considering that the lithium cells, uh, the source of voltage is a little higher, okay, than nicotinamide hydride as well, of course, lead acid battery. So as you can see, I need to remove the boss bars that connect these cells within, but take a look. These boss bars are welded. So I'm gonna need to open them, okay, to finally remove this battery. Now, one thing you need to be aware, please, don't do this at home, okay? I'm taking extreme precautions of this uh, because you don't know what's gonna happen with swollen uh, lithium cells. So I'm doing this very, very carefully. This is just for educational purposes. So let me just finish to open this battery, unplug the, or well, try to um, weld or, or uh, disconnect the bus bars from the cells and finish to open it up and finally show you the structure of the integrated 12 volt battery of Hyundai Ionic and Kianiro. So stick around, we will continue. All right, now that everything is unplugged, we can see completely the structure of these. So we have, as I said, negative pole, I'm sorry, the positive pole, okay. Connected by this boss bar, which, which I'm gonna take it away to this second pair of two now the cells are big look at the size of the cells these are the same cells of the high voltage battery all right they're connected by this bus bar over here but welded to the third row and finally the last one and this is how we completely uncover the integrated 12 volt battery of hyundai Ionic and kia Nero. Now let me take away all these covers very carefully i don't want to scratch any of these battery cells. Woo. Careful there, Jose. Let me see one more over here. Give me a second. I need my I need both my hands. Now these are the lithium cells completely loosened, but way still connected in a, in a serious parallel circuit. So as you can see, we have two cells connected in series, in, in parallel, okay? Then in series with another parallel circuit, one more and one more. So we finally have eight cells, which four pairs of parallels, and then of course, four individual cells connected in series to finally create 13.5, 13.6 volts of this lithium battery. Finally, but, Let's see, give me a second. Gotta be careful. Don't make any contact between the poles because remember this is positive, this is positive and negative. But the thing is, all right. This is the case where they're supposed to go, right? Now look at the heat sink. Right. <laughs> it all goes to this plate. So you know what? I hate it. This is a piece of crap design that definitely does not protect the battery from heating at least in a place where you see uh, pretty much hot weather like here in the Caribbean hmm. but let's see now the batteries are supposed to be this half this thickness now let's put them together <laughs> there you go can you see now my point this is exactly what's going on here let me put it in standing up as well these are supposed to be uh, well yes well you finally saw the real structure of these batteries let me put them back again here and as you can see I can open this in stages as I said well this one only goes right here this one goes right here and this one goes right here so I can just probably assemble it back but with that level of swelling, it's gonna be very, very difficult to put it back. So I'm just gonna put it with the normal structure as much as I can and take it over uh, to school for uh, teaching purposes. Because um, I was thinking about in, let me show you, because I can easily disconnect these cells from these big boss bars. Okay, so I just finally took it off the welding over here and I can completely open but still gotta be careful I don't want this to touch anything 
Okay, we know that this one is the negative pole, but even that here in the label is showing me that this is the negative pole. Okay, positive over here, negative, positive, and that's how we continue until she reaches the main positive. But it ain't saying nothing. Let me see what it's saying here. Let me see. LGX, all right, for sure. Well, because it's uh, from Hyundai Ionic, usually they are uh, LG battery. But it's not saying anything about the battery's capacity. I'm not reading anything similar. But that's how it is. And it has some sort of a, let me see, yeah. Sort of like a rubber separator, which is, of course, I consider fine, but this is how it is, guys. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> this is finally the structure of the integrated lithium-ion 12 volt battery that belongs to Honda Ionic, Kia Niro. Uh, once again, you guys saw the complete yeah, second just to show you. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. The structure of the That heat exchanger is just a few aluminum from the top, but the air never blows uh, within the cells. So what I what I could think about this is just probably uh, here in the Caribbean too much heat, and this cooling system I definitely don't consider the very best for hot weather. And finally, the last thing that it could be the current sensor failing, but in order to know that for sure, I think it's just better for as a preventive maintenance. Uh, every certain often recalibrate the state of charge of the battery with a bi-directional scan tool. Okay, so as you guys can see, what I'm just doing is just taking out the uh, cells from the bus bars, which they can easily go out with your bare hands, organizing, of course, with the very same polarity together. And here what I want to do, I want to measure the individual state of charge or the, the individual voltage to see if by chance we have just one that fails or all of them just simply fail together. So let me just finish to take them out from the bus bars and check the state of charge of each one of them one by one. So we will continue. Okay, so what I want to do now is measure the voltage of the individual cells. Let's begin with this first one, which is, let me see, 3.29, all right, here we go. Go to the next one. 3.29 as well. There we go. 3.29. There we go. 3.29 so far. Fully in balance. 3.29. Almost done. 3.29. There's two more. 3.29. Last one. 3.29. All right. So here, what's happening? Let me show you. Okay. The thing is, uh, apparently. The battery is completely in balance. As I said, these lithium ion, they remain fully in balance thanks to the voltage monitoring system that keeps, that has a self balancing system inside the battery management unit. So it's not just one single cell that went bad in this unit. It's just the complete structure, probably because of heat that damaging and begins, of course, swell the module. What's swelling inside the battery? It's gassing. That's actually what happens in this, in this battery. So uh, this is a very, very interesting uh, heat exchanging system, but I consider that for hot weather is a super, super not efficient. So that's my point of view of this, not my technical point of view of this integrated uh, lithium ion 12 volt battery from the Ionic. Now, I want to force, I'm actually gonna make something very stupid. I want to force one of these cells into thermal runaway because I want to know, find out if we catch fire. Now remember, do not do this home because it's extremely, extremely delicate. So just stick around and we're almost over, stick around. Okay, so we are in an open windy space and I'm going to force thermal runaway in this individual cell. Now let's check it out. 
see. I give it a hard hit. Nothing happened. Second, let me see. Okay, nothing happened. Let me do it one more time. Here we go again. All right. Nothing happening. All right. Let's go one more time. Okay. Okay, here we go once again. I'm gonna do a thermal runaway test. Here we go. Mm. This is actually nice. One more time. Thermal runaway test. All right. Let me keep going. Crash test. Now with the hammer, here we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, you know what this means, right? Let me see. These batteries won't catch fire. You know what? These are good news for you. I don't see any thermal runaway. I don't see any catching fire. Nothing. Give it one more time. And remember, this battery state of charge was completely fine. definitely safe <laughs> okay so you guys won't believe it but look absolutely nothing happened now let's go to test number two we're gonna bend the battery let's see what happened as I said don't do this home this is very stupid we're just I just want to test with you guys the level of safety of this integrated total battery if by chance she creates thermal runaway or not now you have to remember these are low voltage it's 3.7 volt so I'm not expecting something catastrophic to happen, but as I said, you never know. Let's do the band test now. So stick around. Mm -hmm. All right, band, band test. If something happened, I would just throw it away right away. Nothing is happening. So, nothing happened. I wonder if this cells after bending and sending all a projectile, they will fall into thermal runaway. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna measure the voltage of this battery as well as that one. So, stick around. Okay, now, this one apparently went to thermal runaway, but she didn't catch any fire, no smoke, nothing. Well, let's, let's see the state of charge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she definitely went to thermal runaway. The voltage is zero. Let's go to the one we bend. This cell is still fully charged. All right, let's just do one more thing. Let's finally finish to pinch this one as well. So hold on. Okay, final thermal runaway. So let's see, she's showing 3.29. Let's pinch the battery, here we go. All right. Let's check this voltage. Gonna run away number two, pinch number two. Okay. 
Okay, yeah, I, I saw a little smoke here. I see, it's just okay. One more. Now, hey guys, remember, don't do this smoke. This is actually very stupid what we're doing. Now, this is just a test. All right, can you see? Smoke. You see a little smoke. What about the voltage are we doing? 3.25. One more. Okay, I'm sorry. 3.26. All right. Hit, test. Let's see. Yep, that's it. She's gone. And yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, she got, she's heated inside. Ooh, it's very hot, actually. But finally, all right. But hey, guys, these are definitely great news. These batteries are not catching fire at all. Woo! <laughs> so, Jose, what is the purpose you're doing this stupid test? Well, because we want to know if by chance this battery is it safe or not when they get swollen and if by chance swollen too much at the point when they get thermal runaway well the answer is finally uh, it doesn't catch fire which is a great thing it produces heat of course but once it begins to produce heat it comes to thermal runaway and that's it probably smoking a little bit it's all what i see which is great now this is telling me clearly that this is not lithium ion battery this might probably be um, lithium iron phosphate could be because it's the one that I know that does not catch fire which is great of course uh, I'm not sure about the lithium polymer because lithium polymer I think it produces uh, fire but I know that lithium iron phosphate is super safe it doesn't produce doesn't do any kind of uh, uh, heavy contaminating or catching fire spark arcs one of those things okay so we're finished with the test today i hope you guys like as i said hybrid solution diagnostic here to show you the very truth so finally lithium 20 uh, 12 battery of the kia Niro and hyundai ionic when it begins to swell just replace it and that's it because it's just going to uh lose its capacity but it's very nice that you will know that uh, so far no fire at all but yes, they go to thermal runaway and develop a lots of temperature, okay? So, we're almost done. All right, so with this cell, we did something a little more interesting. We put it on, we just smash it with the hammer without opening it. And she went to the thermal runaway, but I just want to make sure if she comes and produces fire or not. She's in heavy thermal runaway, but see so far no fire now remember guys don't do this at home this is actually very stupid this is just for educational purpose stick around all right the cell is open the cell still has let's see how we're doing all right it's going down now this is the cell in thermal runaway but so far no fire at all. So what I did is just smash it with my hammer. What I don't understand is that I did the same thing over here, but pinching it. Of course, they're super hot. She went and thermal run away, but I didn't give it a chance. I'd give it a chance to exhaust, to take it to exhaust. To lose the smoke right away. All right, let me see. He's almost done. Right. 0 0.089. That's it. Whew. 
<laughs> it make me sweat. <laughs> okay. Now the thing is, okay, we did three tests. One of them was pinch test. This one over here, pinch test. The other one was smash and pinch with the hammer. And the third one is just smash with the hammer without any pin. So I won't allow the smoke to come out uh, for, so it will accumulate and probably begins to uh, heat up way much more. And this is exactly what's happening over here. So take a quick look. She's still smoking a little bit, but that's it. The voltage is completely gone. Woo. Once again, if you're liking our content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Support High Resolution Diagnostic, which is a channel made for you. So, in conclusion is, um, well, apparently the cells, if you force them to thermal run away, they ain't catching fire. As you can clearly see one of them, let me see, this one is a little darky. It produces, it produces uh, smoke, but so far no fire at all, which is definitely great. So I wanted to show you this uh, actually very risky maneuver. So please, once again, don't do this home. Okay, so you will know if you have uh, Kia Niro and Hyundai Ioniq, the second generation that comes with the integrated lithium battery, you know that, that in according to my uh, personal opinion of this type of cooling system, I think it's just not efficient when it comes for hot weathers. Okay, so the batteries, and I'm not saying that they, they have a degradation one individual, no, the battery is fully balanced. It's just probably just getting overheated or overcharged for some reason. Anyway, the only recommendation that I can give you guys for Kiani or Hyundai is probably every, every couple of service once a year, just recalibrate the state of charge of the battery. So it, when it begins to lose its little capacity, the computer will know that for sure by forcing it adaptation with the scan tool. Uh, and finally, it's safe, no thermal runaway. Okay, so I hope you guys like this very interesting episode where it, it was supposed to be short, but it finally extended because it began to get too much uh, entertained. So follow High Resolution Diagnostic YouTube channel and follow High Resolution Diagnostic TikTok. TikTok, I'm showing you every, every single daily stuff what we're doing here in High Resolution Diagnostic. So thank you so much for watching. I think you guys in the very next episode. Blah, 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 blah. Bye-bye.